The pandemic has resulted in the sudden loss of income for businesses and individuals alike, deepening poverty and increasing hunger amongst our people. The urgent and dramatic measures we have taken to delay the spread of the virus have been absolutely necessary. They have given us as a country the space to better respond to the inevitable rise in infections and to thereby save tens of thousands of lives. While the nationwide lockdown is having a devastating effect on our economy, it is nothing compared to the catastrophic human, social and economic cost if the virus could spread amongst our people unchecked. Our foremost priority now is to intensify the health interventions needed to contain and to delay the spread of the disease and to save lives. This evening I wish to address you on our economic and social response to this global health emergency. The pandemic requires an economic response that is equal to the scale of the disruption it is causing. Our economic response can be divided into three phases. The first phase began in mid-March when we declared the coronavirus pandemic as a national disaster. This included a broad range of measures to mitigate the worst effects of the pandemic on business, on communities, and on individuals. The measures included tax relief, the release of disaster relief funds, emergency procurement, wage support through the UIF, and funding small businesses. We are now embarking on the second phase of our economic response to stabilize the economy, address the extreme decline in supply and demand, and to protect jobs. As part of this phase, we are announcing this evening a massive social and economic support package of 500 billion rand which amounts to about 10% of our GDP. The third phase is the economic strategy we will implement to drive the recovery of our economy as the country emerges from this pandemic. And central to the economic recovery strategy will be the measures we will embark upon to stimulate demand and supply through interventions such as substantial infrastructure build program, the speedy implementation of economic reforms, the transformation of our economy and embarking on all other steps that will ignite inclusive growth in our economy. We will outline this in the days to come. Over the past few days, we have been in consultation with various stakeholders. We have met with business, labor, and community constituency in NEDLEC. We have met with our premiers, MECs, and Metro Mayors, and with the members of the Presidential Economic Advisory Council. Following these meetings, Cabinet considered various proposals and finalized the social relief and economic support package that stands at the center of the second phase of our economic response. This involves, firstly, an extraordinary health budget to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. Secondly, the relief of hunger and social distress. Thirdly, support for companies and workers. And fourthly, the phased reopening of the economy. An amount of 20 billion will be directed towards addressing our efforts to this pandemic. If we are to successfully manage the anticipated surge in cases, 
and ensure that everyone who needs treatment receives it. We must provide for additional expenditure on personal protective equipment for health workers, community screening, and increase in testing capacity, additional beds in field hospitals, ventilators, medicine, and staffing. The nationwide lockdown has had a negative impact on the revenue of municipalities at a time when the demands on them are increasing. Additional funding of 20 billion rand will therefore be made available to municipalities for the provision of emergency water supply, increased sanitation for public, of public transport as well and other facilities. But they'll also be able to provide food and shelter for the homeless. Another significant area that requires massive additional expenditure is the relief of hunger and social distress in our communities across the country. While we have put in place measures to protect the wages of workers in the formal economy and have extended support to small, medium and micro-sized businesses, millions of South Africans and the informal economy and those without employment are struggling to survive. Poverty and food insecurity have deepened dramatically in the course of just a few weeks. To reach the most vulnerable families in our country, we have decided on a temporary six-month coronavirus grant. We will direct 50 billion rand towards relieving the plight of those who are most desperately affected by the coronavirus. This means that child support grant beneficiaries will receive an extra 300 rand in May and from June to October they will receive an additional 500 rand each month. All other grant beneficiaries will receive an extra 250 rand per month for the next six months. In addition, a special COVID-19 social relief of distress grant of an amount of 350 rand a month for the next six months will be paid to individuals who are currently unemployed and who do not receive any other form of social grant or URF payment. The Department of Social Development will issue the requirements needed to access and the application for this funding. The South African Social Security Agency, SASA, will within days implement a technology-based solution to roll out food assistance at scale through vouchers and cash transfers to ensure that help does reach those who need it faster and more efficiently. In addition, to fill the immediate need, the Department of Social Development has partnered with the Solidarity Fund, NGOs in our country, and community-based organizations to distribute 250,000 food parcels across the country over the next two weeks. We are deeply disturbed by reports of unscrupulous people who are abusing the distribution of food and other assistance for corrupt ends. We will not hesitate to ensure that those involved in such activities face the full might of the law. The coronavirus will lead to many people losing their jobs. An additional 100 billion Rand will be set aside for protection of jobs and also to create jobs. Since the declaration of a state of national disaster over a month ago, government has put in place a range of measures to support workers' wages, 
and assist companies in distress. By the end of May, the UIF's special COVID-19 benefit has already paid out 1.6 billion rand, assisting over 37,000 companies and 600,000 workers. 40 billion has been set aside for income support payments for workers whose employers are not able to pay their wages. We continue to provide assistance in the form of loans, grants and debt restructuring to SMEs, to spaza shop owners and other informal businesses. The value of this assistance to date is over 100 million rand. An additional amount of 2 billion rand will be made available to assist SMEs and spaza shop owners and other small businesses. The IDC facility to support companies to procure or to manufacture personal protective equipment has been utilized in the past few weeks with finance of 162 million rand approved to date. Other forms of support have been extended to artists, to athletes and technical personnel, as well as to waste pickers and public works participants in the environmental sector. Government is also working on additional support measures for vulnerable and affected sectors like the taxi industry. In addition to existing tax relief measures, we will also be introducing a four-month holiday for companies' skills development levy contributions, fast-tracking VET refund payments, and a three-month delay for filing and first payment of carbon tax. The fourth area on which Cabinet has resolved is the phased reopening of the economy. We will follow a risk-adjusted approach to the return of economic activity, balancing the continued need to limit the spread of the coronavirus with the need to get people back to work. As I have said previously, if we end the lockdown too soon or too abruptly, we risk a massive and uncontrollable resurgence of the disease. We will therefore follow a phased approach guided by the best available scientific evidence to gradually lift the restriction on economic activity. As we do so, we remain firm in our resolve to contain the transmission of the virus. We will therefore need to act with agility and flexibility in the weeks and months ahead and respond to the situation as it develops. For more, go to ewn.co.za.